Welcome back to another episode of the Coach's Car Chronicles. I'm your host, Dr. Charles Inferno, where we are recording on Thursday, December 29th. I think this is like the fifth recording of the day. Uh, just had a great lunch with Dan Chambliss. He's really a national treasure. If you ever get the opportunity to hear him speak or just spend time with him, guarantee you'll leave uh, a more fortunate individual because he for me he makes me think outside the box and has a different perspective on really anything that we talk about than me which is great because my perspective I think or the lens that I see things through or you know it's through my lens right my perspective and he's able to add a little bit of an extra twist to those things which I'm really fortunate for having had the opportunity to meet with them every once in a while and uh, talk shop. And um, one of the things that we talked about today really had to do with uh, superstitions and how we manifest these superstitions into how well or how good we're going to do something based on what we did that day or that week or over, you know, a prescribed amount of time. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think of it so much, and I shared this with him, as uh, superstitions, but more about like routines and rituals that people find themselves in or establish habits for that create a sense of calm and alleviate possible stresses and anxieties, at least in competition, more specifically with throwing, of doing the same thing over and over again, the exact same way at the exact same time, in the hopes of relieving the stress of things happening by chance or doing things outside of a comfort zone or routine that might cause <clears throat> discomfort to us. Maybe not physical discomfort, but the emotional, the psychological discomfort. And we spent the better part of like an hour talking about that and how not just athletes, but others establish these types of superstitions or these practices that they believe in that are unique to themselves that um, I don't know that keep you moving forward because you believe that they're going to help you or propel you forward if you will and um, <clears throat> I thought it was interesting because my brother had these crazy superstitions or routines however you want to look at them when he was a high school baseball player and even college baseball player where it was basically the same thing all the time every time after uh, every pitch step out of the box do the exact same thing over and over again but at the time didn't realize that it was causing him to be calmer or to you know kind of reset his mind for what he needed to do uh, but it helped him and uh, he was a great baseball player, you know, scholarship to play in college. So it worked out. I myself had real unique ones when it came to powerlifting and throwing. Uh, not so much in college, but post collegiately, certainly. I didn't know what powerlifting was until I graduated. Of laying things out and doing things a certain way every single time I trained. Uh, setting up for squat sessions the same, bench sessions the same, deadlift sessions the same. Uh, I would, uh, went so far as I wore the same t-shirt for my squat sessions because I thought I squatted better in this green Sparky Adams Baldwin Wallace t-shirt that I won my freshman year of college in 2000 and won a Wallace for a track meet 
where I think I was the only weight thrower in the competition and because I won, or I had a fair throw anyway, I won this green t-shirt. Um, so I squatted in that for the better part of like six years, um, every squat session. Uh, put my shoes on the same way every time, tied them the same way every time, crossed the Velcro over or not in throwing. Uh, but I didn't consider them so much as superstitious. It was just something that I did to make me feel comfortable. And it prepared my mind for what I was going to physically do in the upcoming moments. Uh, and I don't think that those superstitions or routines and rituals exist only for athletes. Of course, they exist for, for others <clears throat> where they journal or they meditate yoga routine or strength training routine or whatever they do but it helps create a sense of uniformity in their life uh, which I don't think is a bad thing if that's going to help you get where you need to go more power to you uh, but that was really the big topic of our conversation was um, talking about superstitions just life in general um, Dan has a great way of setting at least an example for me of uh, being thoughtful and inquisitive with uh, you know what we talk about so I always bring a notebook he has a notebook uh, we just kind of jot down these ideas that we have uh, that come up in, uh, in conversation I think it's really uh, a great way to you know spend a couple hours that I was able to reach out to him a couple of years ago, uh, being so local that uh, he actually responded to an email that I sent him about uh, a willingness to meet when I was coming back from Albany for a conference and spending some time at Hamilton College with him. But uh, Dan is definitely a national treasure, uh, and if anybody has any questions about uh, sociology stuff the mundanity of excellence definitely reach out to Dan on social media he's active on Twitter and things it's really cool uh, but um, yeah that was the crux of our conversation with superstitions and routines and rituals and how people navigate their lives with these understandings or lack thereof understanding what they do and why they do it in order to create a sense of uh, calm over them um, as they you know, continue on their journeys, whatever they might be. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Coach Scar Chronicles. My name is Dr. Charles Inferna. Have a great day.